You need to take a watch of this. Norman Finkelstein is asked by Professor Alan Dershowitz on Pierce Morgan's show whether he will justify or condemn the evil, sick, genocidal attack that Hamas did on October 7th, the raping, mutilating, beheading, burning alive of Israeli civilians. Have a watch of this. What, what Finkelstein is finally saying is that these people, he called them martyrs. I was at Beira. I was at the Nova Music Festival. I saw the remnants of where a woman uh, named Vivian Silver, a peacenik, who used to go over and bring Hamas and, 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 and Gazan people to hospitals, was burnt to death. I saw where people were raped. There is no justification for collective rape. There is no justification for murdering a peacenik. This woman was probably murdered by the very people she brought to hospitals because they knew exactly where she lived and where the hospitals. It's an abomination to even suggest that any kind of martyrdom, dispute over land, dispute over any, could justify what happened on October 7th. Shame on anybody who thinks that civilized human beings should be praised or even justified for doing what they did. I met a man whose son had been beheaded, and Hamas then took his head, brought it back to Gaza, put it on sale for $10,000, and this father had to bury his son without a head. That's what Hamas did. And not only Hamas, but people, ordinary civilians in Gaza, came over the border and participated in these rapes and murders. And shame on anybody who doesn't unequivocally condemn it. There is no justification for what happened on October 7th. No matter what the history is, the history is disputed. But I want to hear Norman Finkelstein say unequivocally, no matter what the history is, there is no justification for the massacres of October okay. 7th. Say well, it, gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll end with Norman Finkelstein's response and answer that question. My, it gives my a legitimate question. My, res my response is exactly the same one I gave you the very first time mm -hmm. I met you, Pierce. Mm -hmm. There were atrocities, large atrocities, that occurred on October 7th. I think it's indisputable. You then asked me, would you consider it terrorism? I then replied to you, I think atrocities denote terrorism. Mm -hmm. However, I said I take the same attitude towards the perpetrators of those atrocities as, I, as the abolitionists in the United States took towards the Nat Turner Rebellion. Nat Turner... So you justify revolt. them, so you, you praise them, so you Allow glorify them and you honor them. That's Pierce, the reality. Pierce, 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 can I finish? Yeah. Can I finish? Yeah. Uh, Nat Turner and the slave revolt committed horrible atrocities. The ab abolitionists said horrible things happened, but they never condemned Nat Turner. No, they Nat don't Turner. happen. They what are they perpetrated what they by did people. Was, You're justifying they, what it. They Shame did was, on Finkelstein. Allow me to finish. This is the lowest point Pierce, you've ever please gotten tell to. Him to stop. And you've gotten to low uh, points. Uh, uh, but this is the lowest uh, point Pierce, you've gotten to. Please, comparing these Pierce, rapists uh, please and these murderers to, well, I think to him, abolitionists is the lowest point in your history. Let him finish what he's trying to say. Sure. Thank okay, you. Let me have By the way, Matt Turner's rebellion... Okay. In Nat Turner's rebellion, they committed horrible atrocities, including beheading babies. That's a fact. However, the and abolitionists... And you're justifying that. They did and you're not, justifying that. They did not... Please, Pierce, can you please tell him to I think stop? let him finish the point he's making, and then, then you respond. Okay. Thank you, thank you okay. so much. However, the abolitionists did not condemn the perpetrators. The abolitionists kept saying, we told you so. We told you so. We told you so. If you treat people like that, what happened with the slave revolt inevitably would happen. And I say, if you lock two million people in a concentration camp for 20 years, half of whom are children who were born into that concentration camp, don't react with shock and dismay and don't react with shock and dismay and disbelief and indignation at what happened on October 7th. 
I have well, spent I the last react, 20 I, years, I, I have spent the last 20 years of my life studying what's been done to the people lying. of Gaza. And each time I reread what I wrote, I'm more, more firm than ever before. I will not condemn those people, even as I acknowledge that massive, unspeakable atrocities occurred on October 7th. Okay. I this is sick, by the way. And we'll hear what Alan Dershowitz says in response. But what he's doing is he's infantilizing them, taking away their moral agency. He's saying, well, what do you expect to happen? They're in a concentration camp. Did the Jews in the concentration camps, when they were liberated, go out and start raping German women, beheading German babies, mutilating them, burning them alive? Gaza is not the same. It is sick. Israel gave away Gaza. And you know why the blockade happened? Because they started firing missiles instead of building factories and greenhouses. The, the, the comparison between Gaza and the concentration camps of Nazi Europe is sick. Many IDF soldiers said they saw apartments that were often more luxurious than in Israel. And they were quite shocked at that. Now, yes, of course, there is, uh, there's, there's a working class and there's, there's poverty just as there is in Israel. But again, we're taking away all their moral agency and saying, well, they had to do that because they had no choice. No. Nope. They did have a choice. They had a choice when they were given Gaza at the beginning, and they had a choice even on October 7th. It is quite frankly sick what Finkelstein's doing. The great crime that Israel is said to have committed of not giving them a state, first of all, is a lie. And secondly, even if that were true, it would not justify the despicable crimes they did. And it would not even be something one could expect of people to do in their circumstances. And what he's doing is he is condoning, qualifying, saying, well, I get it. Have a listen to Alan Dershowitz's reply. Alan Dershowitz, your, let, your let final response. Let me have my last point. Norman Finkelstein, you would not condemn the Nazis, Hitler, Goebbels, and Goering, because they too went through suffering after the end of the First World War. They, too, tried to justify what they did as inevitable because of the inflation, because of living under terrible conditions. They inevitably voted for Adolf Hitler. They inevitably built gas chambers. They inevitably built concentration camps. And you, Norman Finkelstein, who claim your parents are Holocaust survivors, you, Norman Finkelstein, by your logic, would justify every single one of the six billion Jews who were murdered because the Germans who did it don't deserve condemnation because they were victims of the Versailles Treaty at the end of the World War I. That's the situation you're in, Norman Finkelstein. It's despicable. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you want to watch another one, click here. If you want to subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest JTV content, click here. And if you're feeling really keen, you can click the join button down below underneath this video where you can get perks, including early access to new videos and private live discussions with me where we can talk about JTV content and strategy moving forward. And I'll get to hear from you. Thanks again for watching.